morning, everyone. Um, this is one of our regular webinars. It, it happens every Wednesday from 8 to 9 a.m. And today we have deep dive into oral architecture. Ms. Jocelyn Reyes is our lecturer for today. And she is one of our three course creators. Josiel is a full-time faculty member at the Electronics Engineering Department of USD Manila. She's teaching <coughs> sorry, several undergraduate courses on communications and computer networks. Uh, Josiel is also a PhD candidate in the Department of Electronics and Information Engineering at Hong Kong Polytechnic University and is currently writing her PhD thesis in prepar yeah, in preparation for her uh, oral defense. Wow, good luck. So it's a it's a what they call this online course because she's otherwise she's supposed to be in Hong Kong. Her current research is focused on wireless indoor positioning systems using channel state information and machine learning. So very oral specific and oral related course. So Josie, we'll take it away. Morning, Paul. Good morning, everyone. So uh as introduced by I'm Josil Reyes, and today now we will have an overview of the uh, one of the courses of Open Run Asia Open Run Academy, which is your deep dive to into Oran architecture. So the the lecture material contains uh, around fifty five slides. So we we may not we may not be able to cover them all, no, because we are only limited by uh, an hour of our time. But hopefully, hopefully this gives you an idea no, on what is uh, the topic about, no, what is the Oran architecture is about. No? Okay, so for the outline of this of lecture material, no, we'll first have an introduction to the RAN architecture evolution, and then later we'll go over into the overall architecture of Oran and specifications. No? And then let's see how Oran complements 3GPP and other industry standards. And then what are the 3GPP versus ORAN functions nodes and the relevant interfaces in ORAN, in ORAN architecture. No? Because um, the one of the main difference of ORAN or open RAN uh, architecture to the traditional RAN is the interfaces are really open. Uh, it doesn't need the, the uh, proprietary na, proprietary devices for uh, it to work okay and then uh, some implementation options so what what does it mean when we have an open RAN? what does it uh, translate to for the companies for the mobile network operators for the manufacturers no? something like that okay so first of all now let's first um, um, have a brief overview of the current net mobile network coverage in philippines so there are several cellular technologies that are available in our country. We have the 2G, 3G, 4G, and some locations already have 5G. So um, just a review, since um, assuming that a lot of us are, uh, are with uh, electronics engineering background or related engineering courses, uh, we already know that there are different cellular technologies uh, one of the first is in 2G. It is uh, focused on digitized voice. There was already there was also 1G, wherein we consider analog voice. Um, the problem with that is there is no uh, encryption. There is no uh, security. Anyone who who uses the same frequency can tap and hear your voice or hear your conversation. So when 2G came, the uh, the voice is now digitized and they have applied encryption or some sort of security feature. And also the SMS, the short uh, messaging service was introduced. That's why we were able to send a text without yet uh, a connection to the internet that time. And of course that the 2G is still operational now along with the other cellular technologies like 3G focuses on the mobile data and video 4G is more on mobile broadband. So, of course, we'll expect 4G would be much faster compared to 3G. And then 5G is much faster compared to the other generations. So right now, 5G is already being rolled out by our local mobile network operators. And um, according to the 3GPP standards, there are uh, different phases for this. 
uh, there are non-standalone 5G or and also a standalone 5G. So uh, this is done in phases. Not not everything is uh, immediately uh, operational and immediately working as of now. There should be some sort of interoperability with the past um, cellular uh, networks. Okay, so where did I get this data? Uh, this uh, this data, as you can see here, there are some um, colors indicating where each of the cellular technology is. Um, if we go to this link in the in the PowerPoint slide, okay. So you should uh, see my Google Chrome application and. Uh, it opened up this website, the nperf.com uh, slash n slash map slash ph. So this uh, shows the 3G, 4G, 5G coverage of Philippines. And we just have to choose um, which carrier, um, which of the um, available carriers here. So for example, we chose a smart and uh, we'll see the overall network coverage of this um, of a smart carrier and you'll see the different colors if we zoom in okay so for example if you're living in in the zone so you can zoom in and find out the different available technologies uh, here like there are already 5g connections maybe if we zoom in further we'll see other <laughs> connections maybe yeah like 3g some areas only as uh, 3g and uh, take note that in this um, data, it doesn't mean that the data, the coverage is only available on the roads, but rather uh, this was, uh, the data was collected using a drive test. So the engineers um, drove around and measured the data. Of course, if, if there is a 4G plus connection here, that means there is more likely also a 4G connection plus in the, in the land beside the, the road. So this is just to show that in some areas there are uh, 4G plus and 4G coverage. So the difference between 4G and 4G plus is 4G is just a LTE, long-term evolution. Uh, 4G plus is more on LTE advanced. So there is, um, yeah, it, there, it is ad more advanced compared to the other. And then um, it looks like a lot of the areas are um, 4G and above capable. And if you go to maybe Visayas, Visayas region, you can go to Cebu. And you can also see there are different cellular technologies here, um, like also 5G, 4G plus, and 4G. If you go to Mindanao, there are also several different cellular technologies. Like maybe if we go to Davao, there is also some 5G implementations there. Uh, you can go to this website. Maybe I put up the link a little bit later, so you can uh, you can go and uh, check this out. But let me just go back to the uh, slides. Okay, so we have seen that there is a several network coverage in Philippines, and slowly we are transitioning towards the 5G coverage. So there are thousands of radio access networks or RAN that provide the mobile network coverage. We are able to have this data, we are able to have this network coverage because of the radio access network uh, um, equipment, radio access network uh, implementations. Okay, so what is radio access network? So um, basically in, a, in this telecommunication setup, we have the this foundation or like this core, uh, this core network no, as one of the block uh, in the in this block diagram. There is also the access network and the transport network. So the core network consists of the interconnections between the different mobile operators, also also as well as interconnection between the uh, different uh, base stations of the different mobile network operators. So. Um, it offers various services by the network. And then the transport network is in charge of uh, the backhaul connection from the core to the access network. And the access network is now the part that allows the end user, like the user equipment, UE, 
to connect to the radio access network via a wireless transmission. So more likely the part of this transport network are uh, fixed like um, wired connections, the backhaul connections are more likely wired connections. Although in some cases, there are also microwave access, just like here. The, the microwave device or the microwave antennas connect to another base station um, to, it, it is used so if the, the path going from this base station to the other base station is more convenient by doing a point-to-point -point link compared to the the other um, other alternative, which is yung pag, uh, by using the trunk circuits. Okay, so um, the focus of the open RAN or the radio access network is uh, this portion. Uh, a lot of a lot of the cost for setting up these base station or this of uh, the coverage, the mobile network coverage, comes from uh, setting up the access networks. And uh, a lot of this, when you buy an equipment, it's more likely that the other equipment that you will also use, the interfaces that you will also use, are more likely from the same vendor, which makes the, the setting up to be locked into the same vendor. So if you want to upgrade, then you have to, of course, buy the same, um, the same vendor-specific device, and then you are locked in, in there. It's, uh, it's not possible for uh, the traditional RAN to mix and match from different vendors and just uh, like a plug and play setup. So later we'll discuss more about that. But uh, here is uh, here are different uh, RAN generations, RAN in across different generations. There are actually uh, names and terminologies for each one. So in 2G, the RAN is called the uh, uh, GERAN or GSM, Edge uh, Radio Access Networks. And uh, the terminologies for the, the parts of the GERAN is BSC and BTS, so Base Station Controller and Base Transceiver Station. But when we uh, arrive to 3G, we now have a different uh, radio access network, which is the UT RAN. So this is a universal terrestrial uh, radio access network. And now we have, instead of BSC and BTS, we have RNC and Node-B. So the RNC is radio network controller, and Node-B is uh, basically like just the, the node, the, the base station. And in LTE, in long-term evolution, or in 4G, we have the EUTRAN, which is the evolved UTRAN. And uh, similarly, it, is somewhat called as node B, but it's uh, E node B for, for the radio access network. And uh, for 5G, we have 5G RAN and it uses G node B. So instead of using E, it uses G for the node B. And the NR is the new radio. So as you can see here, the, the terminologies for the radio access network varies depend, vary depending on the considered cellular technology. So the basically the RAN, the, our, the RAN is the general name for the access network equipment of cellular networks. And uh, um, it is possible when you go into the base stations, there may be different uh, equipment there and they are called differently because they are for different generations. Okay, so uh, that is the introduction. <laughs> That's only just the introduction before we go to uh, the RAN architecture evolution. And uh, the main reason for having the RAN architecture evolution is because of the disaggregation of the different components. For example, uh, earlier I have mentioned that there is a core network here. And then that core network connects to the access networks uh, via the transport network or the back home. For the core network, there are components like the hardware and software components. At the same time, the RAN also have um, the RAN also has the hardware and software components. So the, this 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 aggregation is basically the splitting of the system into uh, smaller subsystems. And uh, in this part also we disaggregate the hardware and software such that we can make the hardware to just be 
uh, commercially available uh, device like a pot server or a commercially uh, commercial on the shelf uh, server and then the software can run on that um, uh, generic server so for open ran we focus on the disaggregation of the radio access network components particularly this uh, ran hardware and ran software okay so this trend of disaggregation is uh, not limited for open ran it has already been a trend in several different uh, systems like for example in this um, evolution of uh, hardware and software disaggregation um, like for example from mainframes to computers um, uh, as we uh, improve and have a smaller chip that have better uh, processing better um, memory etc and so on okay so uh, you see here from hardware to uh, applications and to the cloud and also for telecommunication okay so um, next is more on the uh, traditional uh, ran so first in the 2G and in the early phases of 3G, the BBU, the base band unit, and the radio unit are co-located. So basically, both of them are on the same uh, position, same cabinet, and um, the connection from this uh, BBU and RU to the antenna utilizes uh, some RF cabling here. So this, uh, in this traditional base station, the signal processing, the RF equipment, the network access are found in this part. And it requires uh, long RF cables because as we know, the base station um, antenna or the tower is quite uh, tall. So it takes a lot more uh, cabling for it to reach the antenna. So the imagined amplifier is here, and then we have a long transmission line connecting to that antenna. Of course, we will experience a lot more um, attenuation and signal loss along the coaxial cable. So this is the, the coaxial cable. So later in the fa later phases of 3G and in the rollout of 4G, the RU is now separated from the BBU and is placed near the antenna. So the remote radio unit is now placed um, nearer the antenna. So this is done so that there is a, um, a less, less problem of signal inter a signal attenuation and loss. And this rate, uh, this uh, remote radio unit is in charge of the, um, the conversion from digital to analog and analog to digital conversion. Okay. So the RRU is an RF equipment. And uh, along here is we now use some fiber optic cables connecting the BBU to the RF. And the BBU is composed of hardware and software. And the, this BBU can also drive um, several RRUs. So there may be other RRUs in place here near, near the uh, BBU. Okay, so what is the challenge here? The connection from the BBU to the RU, yeah, the BBU to the RU uses the cables, and there is also this interface called the CTRI, which is still uh, proprietary. So it's uh, it's the interface between RRU and BBU, and one of the uh, front hall interface connecting the two. So this CPRI is still proprietary. So that means um, if there is a change in the RRU and BBU, the CPRI also changes. So this is for tra the uh, traditional RAN. So you can see here the overview of the block diagram showing the non-split and split architecture. So when we say split, uh, that's just when the when the RRU is now separated from the BBU. So RRU is closer to the antennas. So for the non-split option, you'll see here that the BBU can drive several different RUs and the CPRI is inside here. And there are coaxial cables connecting the RU to the antennas. 
Then of course there is a backhaul from the radio access network to the core network. And then for the split architecture, the BBU is the only one inside the cabinet and the RRU is more on nearer the, the antennas to minimize the loss from the conversion uh, ABC, uh, DAC, then less, less signal noise attenuation or less signal attenuation and uh, loss. Okay, so this uh, particular setup here, whether it's non-split and split, uh, this traditional RAN is also known as classical RAN or uh, this distributed RAN. Okay, so here I've mentioned also in the previous slide that the RRU, the RRU, the BBU, and this particular CPRI, there's a front hall interface. The front hall means we are connecting BBU and RRU. All of them are still proprietary. So if we change one of them for uh, maybe there is a problem with, uh, or there is an upgrade, then of course there is a need to change also the others and buy it from the same vendor. So it, of course it requires uh, additional uh, capex for the operation of the, the system. Okay, so from there, some other companies, uh, some other consortium also plan to improve that challenge, wherein the BBU is no longer on the same um, location as the re remote radio head, remote radio unit. They now put the BBU, the baseband unit, on the central office itself. So it's now uh, located on the um, central office or the switching office of the, the network provider. And then uh, what they just do is that they use optical distribution network. So a set or an interconnection of different optical fiber connections from the same central office to the different, um, different uh, locations of the remote radio head. So this is done so that uh, the BBU is centralized. All the information is somehow like uh, processed in the central office. And the only, the only task of this outside um, cabling would be to transmit the information and convert it for the users. Okay, So BBU is no longer uh, on site, but is in the central office. And the functions can also be virtualized and hosted somehow in the cloud. When we say cloud, it's uh, not really a, on a cloud uh, per se, like uh, in a data center, but rather in the central office. Okay, so this uh, this uh, BBU also was split into the distributed unit and central unit. So again, there is a further disaggregation of the hardware. So the two manages uh, different tasks. So the distributed unit is focused more on the, uh, the real-time uh, layer one and layer two uh, functionalities. And the central unit is uh, focused on non-real-time, uh, the layer two and layer three functionalities. Okay, so, okay. so the front hall connections are deployed using optical distribution network. But uh, the challenge is uh, this is only limited to places where there are access, uh, there is an access to fiber connections. This one doesn't still uh, solve the, uh, the issue of the vendor lock-in because uh, all of this, uh, the connections, the, the units, the baseband units are, are, you, are still uh, proprietary. Okay, so another evolution of the radio access network is the uh, virtualized RAN or VRAN. And in the VRAN, more on the different parts are also virtualized. Like for example, the, the BBU are also virtualized. They can run on a commercial on the shelf uh, server, and then uh, they can still manage different RRUs. So similarly, you can see that there are the, the access networks, so this is the front hall, and then we have the back hall and the mobile, uh, the core network. Okay, so the BBUs are COTS hardware 
running on proprietary software with virtualized network functions. But still, the front hall interface here towards the RU is still proprietary. So that's really the challenge of uh, this aggregation towards Open RAN. The prior units, the prior uh, parts are proprietary, which uh, made it expensive if you have to change uh, one component or have to upgrade one component. You, you can't really uh, mix and, and match. Okay, so if we put uh, all these different RAN um, technologies beside each other, so we have the DRAN or the traditional RAN, the centralized or the cloud RAN, the virtualized RAN, and the open RAN. So in the DRAN, it was mentioned earlier that we have the uh, baseband unit. And in the non-split option, we also have the remote uh, the radio unit inside. And there is a front hall interface. In the split option, we have the remote radio unit here baseband unit here so they are uh they're they're not allocated on the same cabinet okay and the functionalities of the this portion would be based on these different standards that we will discuss a little bit later for CRAN, we now have uh, several baseband units that are located on the same central office that can uh, basically be uh, used to manage several different uh, remote radio units. So the front hall is covered by the optical network uh, distribution, optical distribution network. Still, um, a lot of the components are proprietary. And for the virtualized RAN, uh, the, there is a virtual equivalent of the distributed unit and central unit. Again, these are parts of the BPU. These are just disaggregated portions in charge of the, the processing. The DU is in charge of uh, the processing towards the R RRU. CU is in charge of processing towards the, the core. And lastly, for the open RAN, the focus is now not only for um, the proprietary interfaces, but also the front hall interface should also be open. Okay, so there is a, a, a change towards that. And as well as um, some portions of the task originally for the baseband is now assigned for the, the RRU, so the lower uh, physical layer um, uh, tasks, which will be covered a little bit later. Okay, so uh, another summary. So traditional RAN, we have non-split and split, and then RRU and BBU are co-located on the same side. Um, RRU and BBU are connected by CPRI, which is, uh, again, this is a proprietary software, I'm sorry, proprietary front hall interface. And in centralized RAN, the BBUs are now pulled in a centralized location, such as a central office. And the site only has the antennas and the remote radio unit. There are two options here, the no split BBU and the split BBU, which can be um, split into the distributed unit and central unit. So there are a lot of acronyms here, but uh, uh, as you uh, get exposed and more and more on this, you will also uh, be able to really grasp and memorize the acronyms. And then we have the virtualized RAN, which is the BPU functions are now virtualized and they are somehow um, running on a commercial on the shelf server, a commercial off the shelf server on the, and on the cloud. When we say cloud, it's not really the internet cloud data centers, but rather on uh, the uh, hosted central office. And for Open RAN, the remote radio unit will be uh, also COTS-based hardware. BBU is also COTS-based hardware or, um, and also virtualized. FH is now an open interface. And then the RAN functions are RUDU and C. Okay, so 
um, later uh, on how to implement which uh, particular split will be used. This will be further discussed a little bit later in, this, in the slides. And this is another summary showing which parts would be proprietary, which parts would be open. So as you can see in the traditional RAN, um, everything is proprietary. The RRU, the BBU, the front call interface. In centralized RAN, uh, still proprietary, uh, but there are some, um, some changes like you can pull all the BBU functionalities and this, uh, use a distribu distribution network to connect the BBU to the different RRUs. So, and for virtualized RAN, it started really the uh, towards the open uh, RAN, uh, open RAN initiative, because the BBU hardware is now uh, a COTS server, commercial off-the-shelf server, and you can just run your own or the vendor-specific software on that hardware. But still, the front hall is proprietary, the RRU is proprietary, so. Uh, there is still vendor lock in here. And then for open RAN, the, the trend is that every, every hardware would be uh, open. So we have a commercial off the shelf, software defined radio for RRU. So for BBU, we have the commercial off the shelf server. And the front hall is also an open interface which also is going to be covered later in this uh, lecture uh, material for this course. Okay, so the vendors can uh, proceed to use their own proprietary software, but as long as it can run on the commercial official server, then it's okay. So the idea of this open RAN is uh, that we have virtualization and uh, more on open source, open standard, interoperability, and later there is a, a way for the the mobile network operators to be able to uh, be able to decide which split they will use. Okay, so um, let's proceed to the next part of the discussion. So. We're still at slide 17, but overall this has 54 slides, I think. So uh, of course we will not be able to cover all of them because we are only limited to uh, one hour. So maybe I'll finish up, up to a certain part so that we'll have more time uh, later if anyone has any questions. Okay, so uh, we are now familiar with the uh, architecture of ORAN. And, and now let's proceed to the overall architecture of ORAN and the specifications that are related to this. You know that the, the mobile network is composed of these parts. We have the core network, we have the transport network, we also have the access network. So the uh, all of this are, can be connected or rather can be related to the seven layers of the OSI model. And we know we have the seven layers, the layer one, physical, layer two, data link, layer three, network, layer four, transport, uh, layer five, session, layer six, presentation, and layer seven is application. So the uh, majority of the RAN functions lie on the lower layers, particularly the physical data link and network layers. And we already know that the main RAN components are the radio unit and the baseband unit. So we'll see here what are the specific functions or what are the specific protocols that is assigned to each layer and what is uh, their functionalities. So for example, in the figure on the left, we can see that there is a remote radio unit or remote radio head, that's the other name. It is connected to the baseband unit using the front hall interface. And the baseband unit is connected to the core network using a back hall interface. So the RRU has the function for the radio frequency. So this is the lower fee. And then the other uh, physical layer is the, the high. 
Okay, so specifically, the different protocols are shown here. For the physical layer, the radio frequency part is in charge of the analog to digital conversion and digital to analog conversion. And the high fee, this specifically this physical, is in charge of modulation, demodulation, and also um, cyclic redundancy check or error correction. Also in the baseband unit, it has a lot more functions. It's really working very hard. There is also a medium access control, multiplexing, for the purpose of multiplexing, uh, packet scheduling, channel mapping. There is also radio link control, RLC. Uh, it is used for segmentation of the different um, packet, uh, the packet data units, also for error correction. And then we have the PDCP, Packet Data Convergence Protocol. And these are the functions. And the other two is the Radio Resource Control and Service Data Adaptation Protocol. Okay, so there are so many uh, protocols in place, but all of them are used so that we uh, can assume uh, interoperability in the different components. So originally in the previous architectures like in uh, 2G, 3G, um, most of these are uh, monolithic blocks and uh, there are um, few interactions between the nodes. And now with the uh, transition towards uh, open RAN, the blocks are um, uh, disaggregated and there, there is more open uh, interface and also open, um, open hardware. Okay, so, so originally the baseband uh, unit is just a single unit in charge of a lot of things. But now um, with the 3GPP approach, the TR, the, this one, TR38.801, um, you can search this uh, specific standard by 3GPP, the BBU, the baseband unit is split into the central unit oh, it should be this one should be central unit and the distributed unit okay so the central unit is in charge of connecting the, the back hole connecting the radio access network to the back hole and to the core network and the distributed unit is in charge of connecting the the baseband unit to the front hole or the rrd and notice that because there is now a split between the CU and the, the DU, um, there is now a mid hall interface between them. And whether uh, which specific CU and DU functions may depend, may depend on the functional split implemented. We have seen that the, the BBU has a lot of functionalities here. So um, whether which part will be covered by the CU and the DU depends on the functional split. Okay, so what is the functional split? The different protocol uh, is uh, will reside in different components, and the purpose is uh, to to allow flexibility in the deployment, the more flexible and easier to fit to specific deployment constraints. And by standardization uh, of this different functional split we enable the use of different solutions from different vendors. Okay, so depending on the following factors, this influences the split choice, whether uh, we need a certain uh, quality of service, um, we need to, cert to meet a certain user density, or what is the limitation of the transport network or the backhaul network. So the mobile network operators uh, or need the flexibility to be able to choose which of the different splits uh, they can use based on the available COTS hardware and network components. And this also avoids a uh, vendor lock-in. So basically, if they want to change something, um, they can uh, do so without uh, overhaul of all the uh, equipment. And uh, hopefully this will reduce their total cost of operations. Okay, so uh a little bit later the different different um splits will be discussed or in in the later part of this um this particular course that this will be further discussed
Okay, so uh, here are the different, uh, in general, these are the different split options we have for the disaggregated solution. We have option two, six, seven, eight, and then there is the combination of uh, two and six options and so on. So later uh, it can be, it will be discussed on how we split the different operations of the BPU and decide uh, which, uh, uh, which part will be used to, which part can be implemented or deployed. Okay, so another um, main component for the open RAN is the introduction of this RAN intelligent controller. So in the 2G and 3G, these controllers were in charge or were responsible for the radio access network orchestration and management. So uh, there are um, uh, there are controllers there. For example, in uh, the 2G or the GSM Edge radio access network, we have the base station controller, and then for um, 3G we have the RNC radio network controller. So they are in charge of uh, orchestrating and managing the radio access network. And starting 4G, there is no separate controller element to simplify the architecture and allow the faster response time. Then by 5G or 5G Open RAN, um, there is now a, a radio access network intelligent controller or the RIC, RIC. It enables the E node B and G node B functionalities for network intelligence, resource assurance, and resource control. So the RIC also implements AI and machine learning to really uh, improve its learning uh, capability and be able to uh, manage the radio access networks a lot uh, more better compared to the, the previous uh, controllers. So because of um, the, uh, because 5G requires lower latency, so therefore, there is a need to really improve the orchestration and management of the radio access networks. And there is also a virtualization of the different um, parts, like the virtualized BB. And the, because of the virtualization and also the trend towards software-defined def networking, uh, it is necessary to um, enable the configuration and optimization of the RAN before any um, further processing is done. So this is how the uh, RAN Intelligent Controller was born, more on for efficiency and improvement of the management of the radio access network. Uh, there is a separate course uh, that's really just focused on the RAN Intelligent Controller because it's uh, a lot more, uh, it has a lot more coverage. So it, the majority of the discussion of RAN Intelligent Controller is uh, no longer uh, covered in this particular course. So this is more on the architecture of the radio access network, of the ORAN. Okay, so um, I think uh, it's, if we continue this, uh, I think we can still continue this one, but uh, we'll only be able to finish until this part on uh, the how ORAN complements 3GDP and other industry standards. Okay, so earlier we have seen that the OSI models, uh, OSI model layers can be mapped towards a specific radio access network protocol. So we have the uh, physical layer that can be segregated or this, uh, um, separated into the high fee and the low fee. And then the data link layer has these different protocols and the uh, network layer has these protocols. And there is an equivalent a 3GP, a 3GPP technical specifications for this. So if we um, search specifically for each of this, you'll see the details of the different uh, RAN protocol there. So the SDAP, this, um, this service data adaptation protocol, is only applicable to 5G standalone architecture. So it's, it's not available in, in the 3G equivalent and the 4G equivalent.
So I think um we can um perhaps end uh, on this uh, final slide here so that uh, we can see another overall architecture of ORAN considering the RAN intelligent controller. So as um, as recommended by 3GPP, this is how the functional split will be done. So there is the, the radio unit connected to the uh, distributed unit using a front hall interface. And this BU and CU compose, uh, comprise the baseband unit but they can be separated so that uh, we can reassign which, um, which parts will be able to um, handle certain functions. And the C, U, and D are connected by mid hall, which is um, the F1 interface as defined by 3GPP. And similarly, if we look at the overall uh, RIC architecture, you can see that um, there are similarities. For example, there is a radio unit, there is a distributed unit, there is a central unit, but the central unit is further um, separated into two. The, the CU control plane and CU user plane, and then um, there is also an interface here, and then um, the O here stands for open, so open distributed unit, open front hall, open radio unit. And what else? We also have the uh, uh, non-real-time or near real-time RAN intelligent controller and the uh, SMO or system management and orchestration. Okay, so I think it can end on this uh, note because there are still a lot of uh, slides for uh, this course. 